Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're going to be looking at the TVR 3000M from 1977. 654 were built in the UK between the periods of 1971 and 1979. Now this is in 1977. It's fitted with a V6 3-liter Ford SX motor, developing around 160 horsepower. However, the body is very light. It's around 900 kilograms, and therefore the torque is around 190 pounds per feet. And that is more than the Porsche 911 SC, built in 1984, which was fitted with a 3.2-liter 6-flat engine. With an acceleration of 7 seconds, between 0 and 60 miles an hour or 0 and 100 kilometers an hour. In today's norms, not fantastic, but in those days, this was one hell of a car. Getting a decent TVR today is not all that easy. Uh, there are not that many around and if you find one, they typically have a big issue with the tubular chassis. Uh, it corrodes very quickly. Now, I was able to get this TVR for a very good price and it's still in a pretty good condition at a first glance. Now, in this video, we're going to go through this complete TVR on the aesthetics, the weak points. We're going to be looking at the engine and the motor. We're going to do some testing on it. And also, we're going to be looking at the tubular chassis because that's where the problem might be. The overall polyester body is just fine. I haven't seen any issues all around the car except on the bonnet and I've found a few stress points around the headlights and you can actually see this little crack here. Now that's not a big deal, this can be repaired, but still uh, it takes a lot of time and it's gonna take a respray. Another problem you might see sometimes are these spiders. Uh, this is a stress point in the actual polyester. Um, and that has to be grinded out and then repatched and then completely be repainted. This car has a couple of them uh, on the front bonnet and I've seen one, three, four of them. On the other side, I don't see any. But that's quite normal for polyester based cars. Uh, if you work on the Lotus, you will see exactly the same thing. You will see stress points and you will also see blistering. Another big spot you often find on these cars is that the doors are sagging. And if you look on this door, it has the same problem, see that? And it means that the hinges that are inside there are worn out, so I will have to replace those hinges. And also the window frame can be a little bit wobbly, like this. So all that will have to be sorted out. And it looks like the bumpers had their best time, but then again, uh, these are easy replaceable. So we're gonna look around for some new ones. And so far, I haven't seen anything dramatic on this car on the outside that cannot be easily be fixed. The tires are good, uh, the shell is good. There's a few little things to correct, of course, but what do you expect of a 43-year-old car? Now, the next point is far more critical. This is the, the roof. And this roof can be opened up from the inside and they really rust badly in this area. If you're looking at the TVR and you look at the sunroof, and you feel with your hand or your fingers over this edge, that should be very smooth. If this is bobbly or wobbly, then there is a lot of rust underneath and that's very hard to replace or even to get a new one. So let's have a look if we can open up that roof. Now that should be not that hard. Oh, and this works really well and this is really nice, the edge. I'm really pleased with this because this would be otherwise a major job to find a replacement. Now the seats are in a very good condition and I like the seat belts that are in it and it even passed MOT with these seat belts, which is a bit surprisingly. Although the back side of the seat is good and the sides of the cushion, however, I think things are ripped a bit here. So I probably need a new cushion for this. Uh, but then again, that shouldn't be much of an issue. Now the dashboard is intact, that's good. It is missing the radio, but I do have the original radio that came with the car. And that's the original radio that came with the car according to the previous owner. I am not gonna do anything with this. Uh, I don't think in this car you actually need a radio. The other good thing is that all the dials are Smith's dials and they're all working. Now that often is not the case, but in, for this car it is. The switches all work. 
and the only thing I don't like about this is this aluminum plate here. I think this has been put in later. The steering wheel is slightly modified. It looks like they have it extended a bit, which makes it even easier to drive with. And in general, the trim is kind of all right. The carpets are good. Uh, I see a lot of junk laying around here, but we'll figure that out what all that is. Um, and there's even a cable here. I don't sure what this switch is. I'm not gonna push it yet. I will need to find out. This is always the problem with cars that you get. You never know what they have been done to it and people mess around a lot with the electrical installation uh, I'm not sure what that is it looks like glue all right but overall the carpets are good we missing the arm here to roll down the window I guess that's not gonna be a big deal although I don't know if you can get the original parts so so far I haven't come across any major issues on this car everything is easy to be fixed but now we're going to start looking at the real stuff we're going to be looking at the engine at the oil leak that has been mentioned in the MOT and we're going to be looking at the tubular chassis because that might have some corrosion uh, and we'll be checking the wheels and the shocks uh, and the brakes although all that was checked in the MOT and there were no remarks. Nevertheless, we still check it. And of course, the last thing is the electricity because that is always a bit of an issue with those cars. So let's get it inside the barn and start working on it. So let's pop the bonnet and see what's underneath. You need to unlock this on both sides, which is kind of interesting. Okay. Well, let's see. It looks like the engine is still pretty much original, except of course the air intake filter. Uh, this is now a can filter, but that's also something most people recommend. Normally you have a big pan on top. Uh, the carburetor is still original. This is the double barrel degas Weber. And the choke is already a manual choke. Um, some of these carburetors actually had a um, water cooled or a water control choke, and that was always causing all kinds of issues. But the thing that is a bit remarkable is that the front fenders, the plastic fenders here, have been cut off on the front, on the left and on the right. And the previous owner told me that that was done to have a better cooling. I don't think this is a good reason for that. There must have been another reason. Uh, but I don't even know if you can get those. Uh, that's going to be interesting to see. Anyway, that's pretty weird to me, but uh, we'll see. I think the battery is a bit on the low side, 45 amps hour for a car like this. I think it might need a bigger one. I see a bit of oil here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but here it is. Uh, and that's coming off the valve cover. And I can see some blue silicon, so they have tried to seal this up instead of getting a proper seal. The thermostat housing. Yeah, I probably might put a new thermostat in, although it might not need it, but it's always good to put a new one in, a new fluid, cooling fluid. But let's have a look on the distributor. I don't know if it's a electronic one or not. Um, that's why I want to check it. And this is already a converter one to an electronic version. You can actually see that here. So that's good. So let us check the engine oil and see how that is. Um, and here it is. I'm not sure, this is like really filled up, so I'm going to wipe it off and then we'll see. And that looks alright. Um, in fact, when I drove the car, I didn't notice any problems with smoke or anything, so I don't think it's consuming oil. But yet there is an oil leak somewhere. So let's start the engine and see what it does. Now that starts very quickly. The engine is now running around 80 to 85 degrees centigrade and the uh, idle is around a thousand or 900 rpms and the oil pressure with a hot engine is around 2.5 kilograms. If I increase the rpms the oil pressure should go up so let's have a look and it goes up very quickly and it's almost near to four and a half. So that is a good thing. And what I hear is that the valves are really making a lot of noise. So I'm going to check uh, which valves are really picking.
They all make a little bit of noise, uh, but especially valve or cylinder number three makes most of the noise. So that needs to be fixed. The other thing I can hear is that there is a leak in the exhaust. You can hear it all the way below there. So the valve clearance certainly has to be adjusted. And you can see the little bit of smoke coming out here. This is actually oil coming through the seal of these uh, valve cover and then dripping on the exhaust manifold. And that is no good, of course. That is something we'll have to fix. Right. So let me check how much blow-by this car has. Well, that's not a lot right now. There's almost no blow-by, so that means that the cylinders and the pistons are still quite all right. Okay, so I guess engine-wise we know more or less what we have to do on this car. There's not a lot, so let us close the bonnet or the hood and then lift up the car and look at probably the most worrying area, which is the tubular frame. I haven't seen it myself, so I don't know how it will look like. Got to make sure it fits properly on both sides. Now that probably needs to be aligned as well because that's not normal that I need to do it like this. But maybe it is. Here, there's a lot of oil dripping out here. It's all wet and soaked with oil. This might be coming from all the way on the top uh, from the leak on the um, valve cover. But that's certainly something we'll have to fix. Uh, I also noticed that around the carter itself, there's the silicon blue, so that has been opened before. So that needs to get a new seal for sure. So let's have a look at the subframe, and that still looks pretty good. It peels off a little bit here and there, but it's still very solid, at least in the front. But that's not where the weak spots are. Uh, I think that's probably why it had the remark. So there's surface rust on it, but this shock spring, Oh, that's a bit weird. It's a bit loose. We're on the other side. It actually is uh, solid. So that's something to be looked at. The brake calibers are Lockheed calibers. Flexible hoses, that looks all right, but it's still it's going to need a bit of cleaning up. Uh, I don't like uh, dirty stuff like this. Right, so here is a lot of cleaning up work to be done. Now for the gearbox, I also see oil here and I'm not sure what it smells like, but this might as well be um, oil coming out from the back because it's all soaked with oil here. I'm not sure where it's coming from. Uh, it's a leak somewhere. We'll have to clean all this up and then find out where it's coming from. It is not that it's dripping. It's just soaked with oil. And this might have been for a long, long time. Now in the front, it certainly is engine oil. Now here you see the tubular chassis, and I think this is still pretty much intact. Now these are the outriggers, and that's where it typically gets real bad. Also on the top, and you can see some debris falls off. But to be honest, this is just surface rust, and the bad thing is that somebody has sprayed it before to protect it. I'll probably well either sandblast all this uh, and clean it all up, but I might even take the chassis or the body or the top off the chassis itself and then do a thorough job on that chassis. And on both sides, that's still looking very good. Um, let's see if I can get to the top. Yeah, this is really good stuff still. So. Uh, that's all right. And this is a tube part of the tubular chassis and it goes along the edge of the sill all the way to the front. And those can go bad as well. But this is really good. Uh, I think this car is just having a little bit of surface rust. There isn't really that much really wrong or rotten onto that um, chassis. So let's see uh, what this oil could be. So there's a piece right here, uh, which is actually allowing me access into the bell housing. So let me have a look inside and maybe I can see something. All right. What I can see inside is that everything is dry. So I can see the flywheel, but everything is really dry. 
So I suspect that the oil is actually coming from the valve cover on the top or even from this side here, a bad seal on the carter. That's what I suspect. An important out trigger just behind the front wheels. And now you can see why these cars are rusting very quickly in these areas. Because this is plastic and you can see mud will swing up and it gets in between and then you get you know all kind of debris behind it and, and, and it piles up over time you know like this as you can see and that's not good because then it's going to rust all the way through so these are the weak spots of these TVRs uh, the same thing is true in the back but I guess uh, we are lucky with this one because it looks pretty good now the exhaust that's a bit of a different story that doesn't look all that pretty uh, this is the part that comes from the exhaust manifold. In fact, it's one piece and you can see the welding that was done here. And I think there is actually a hole here, right here. See, I can put the screwdriver in it. So um, that's why we can hear it blowing. On this side, it almost looks like the pipe is moved back quite a bit. Um, anyway, it doesn't look pretty. I can see that it extends a bit further than the other pipe. Um, and I'm sure that it's leaking as well because I can actually see it. Uh, so this is a bit crappy, the exhaust. And even the mufflers in the back have been repaired. I can see that in the different areas. Uh, it's kind of a homemade job, most of it. I can see that, you know, they're badly damaged while driving, I guess. It's scraping over the ground. Not good. And if, it, and if we take a closer look on the first muffler, um, that is also in a pretty bad shape I think. It's not that it's leaking but overall it doesn't look too good. I'm going to take off the wheel and having a look on the brakes and on the disc and on the shock absorber. And by the way the tires that are on this car are 205s by 60 and it's a 15 inch um, rim. Wow that's a bit rusty. Now what I can see that is somebody has put a spacer up. So it looks like the discs are still in a very good condition. There's no grooves on it, so that's good. And those are even ventilated discs. Not sure if that is original or not. So let's check. That's still 24. And that's still eight, so we are good. And it looks like somebody has already worked on those brake pipes. Uh, so that's good. We have now stainless steel uh, woven brake pipes. Uh, that is a good thing. And I think the rest looks quite all right. This is the mechanism for the bonnet. And you can move this back or forth to align it together with this nut here. Um, and you've seen that this bonnet isn't aligned properly when I'm closing it. So this is something we'll do after we remove the bonnet and clean it all up and got it sorted out. And this is the radiator. Um, I see the radiator is a little bit wet on the bottom. You see that? So I'm not sure it's because I was driving around, but I do see a lot of humid things here. So I'm going to get a new radiator as well. So I've placed the wheel back on and I noticed a bit of play. So I think the bearing needs to be tightened up on this side. The other side is okay. Uh, so what we've seen so far is the normal wear and tear on a car which is 43 years old. Now this car still has a very good intact tubular chassis, despite the fact that MOT marked it to keep an eye on it. It doesn't mean it's bad, and as you have seen, it's still very solid, so that is a very, very good point. The first thing I'm going to do right now is to get this car into a tip-top mechanical condition. And I don't really care about the cosmetics, like the bumpers and the scratches and so on. This is stuff for later. I might do this later this summer, but right now I want to drive it and I want to make sure it is good and I want to have it in a very good and fine mechanical condition. Now on the chassis, I don't need to do anything for the moment. You've seen the chassis, it's still very solid. Yes, there is surface rust on it and I will take care of that later this summer or maybe next winter when I'm going to take the shell off the car and then get it all blasted and power coated so it's like brand new. Nevertheless, right now I need to fix the leaks on the engine. Uh, that's just installing new gaskets, but I'm going to change all the fluids, the oils, the spark plugs, you know, everything, all the filters, everything will be changed. 
and I will put up a new exhaust because that is really dreadful and you know how bad that sounds right an exhaust that has a hole in it it, it just spoils the whole car um, so I guess it's going to take me another thousand euros or pounds for the exhaust and if you can recommend a good exhaust please let me know and probably another five six hundred but let's say another thousand euros for all the gaskets and the seals and you know all the small parts that I'm going to need to get the engine running so folks I hope that you enjoyed this video and keep on watching bye bye